All right, you see the title. We need to talk about the Iron Mouse situation from Sea Dog. Now, this is like I've noticed a pattern of behavior where at least once a year, right? And I'm sure it happens often, but once a year, something big happens. Iron Mouse reaches a new milestone, new goal, biggest, you know, subscribe channel, all these different things, awards. And then, boom, a bunch of tourists that don't know anything about our situation, don't know anything about the VTuber space, mostly ignorant young kids who've grown up with no role model, then says the most outlandish, hateful, misogynistic things, even questioning her, you know, illness. So, Sea Dog, tell me. This video is going to be a long-winded rant, and if you like that, welcome. Come join the angry British man. And if not, don't worry, my normal videos will resume after this one. I just Let's rant. talk about this. I feel like online lately, it, it has been a miserable experience for any of us to be online. And I actively feel that my mental health gets drained slowly using any online platform, especially yeah. uh, my personal case, Twitter. I think Twitter allowing people to make money from ads is probably one of the worst changes to any platform. Absolutely. Before Elon took over and say what you will about him and what Twitter used to be before, you know, being heavily left leaning and really um, moderating and getting rid of any right leaning ideologies. But when you monetize, you know, shit, suddenly these blue check accounts, like, have you noticed that whenever you clicked onto a popular thread or something, every reply has to do nothing with the actual post. Everyone's posting their own memes, their own rage baits to just get money. Like all, any sense of discussion is gone. And also, because you've incentivized people to make ad revenue off Twitter, which is also very insignificant at the end of the day, people say the most craziest shit to get attention. Because positive engagement is less significant than negative engagement. You can see hundreds of positive comments. That one negative comment will elicit such a vitriol reaction from within that causes people to engage, engage, and the money cycle just go. So it's just monetizing that shit. It's just so stupid in terms of, let's say, I don't know, having any some, some sense of like conversation or discourse online and a bunch of people always trying to attention seek and rage baiting intentionally to obviously farm ad revenue. Platform in history. Sure, I get $20 here and there for tweeting a funny picture of my giant monkey behind me, but there are those who use it to spread misinformation, yeah. lies, just make stuff up, spew absolute vile hatred stuff. It, it's pretty horrible experience to use it now as twitter seems to feel like it only wants outragement bait or yep because again negative emotions are way more easily farmed and you know easily engageable compared to positive shit i mean you've seen those anime you know profile you know accounts that it says i'm this fandom and they don't ever talk about their own fandom content because they know that the clicks will happen if they shit on someone else's fandom right Everybody just wants attention online, even me farming this video. Of course, it's for attention. It's to make money, right? But the, it's, it's just when you incentivize these behavior and you have a bunch of mentally ill kids just online, just always just spewing hateful shit. It is just the biggest cesspool of a place to be. That's why I never really use Twitter. Like I could build a presence there, but what's the fucking point? There's no point. All I use Twitter is for YouTube support contact. That's it tweets that'll make people angry and and if you're not seeing that you're seeing somebody get killed so it's really just a miserable experience overall Agreed. Uh, they get me started on tiktok and instagram which are famous for their brutal comments and i would yeah i hear that instagram reels comments are even worse than tiktok comments tiktok comments low-key it's pretty innovative and you'd be surprised but censorship on tiktok i think is way harder than youtube because i've made content on both platforms and I've seen what people are able to comment and what I'm able to post. TikTok takes itself very seriously due to the scrutinization of their platform being associated with, you know, the CCP. You know, um, even though Douyin is the Chinese version, TikTok is for the global audience. And, you know, we've seen the interviews and rounds of the CEO of TikTok, you know, get bashed on for all these different trends and things that's led to their kids, you know, doing stupid shit, which I think is a fucking parent's problem. Like, it's worse the self-accountability in that. TikTok actually moderates really hard because of those things to make them seem clean. And the insults, the casual racism, it's, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to like, I'm not saying I appreciate or, you know, I'm, I'm respecting, you know, their cleverness, but 
the the ingenuity and the creativeness to get around the existing moderations by having other dog whistles and different you know meanings that alludes to racist things i think happens a lot more on tiktok now instagram reels is it true that it's just way worse because like, i don't post on instagram like i hear, i hear all the time that real comments are fucking insane I wouldn't really even use the word brutal because I think brutal can sometimes mean there's a bit of honesty and fun there, but I would say it's just cruel. Like just being online right now is cruel. It feels like nobody has any respect for each other, but I don't. Yeah, and I don't blame them because again, we've already just talked about the incentive for negative engagements to farm money, but on a grander scale, everyone is upset. Everyone is getting more angry and this isn't like an individual's problem. It's a systematic issue across the fucking world, right? Globally, it's not just my country. It's not just your country. Everyone is struggling. Cost of goods are going up. You know, there's environmental issues that seems out of our control. Every day you hear doomer news about jobs not being available. You know, jobs going away. You know, grocery prices going higher. You have crazy people from both left and right, you know, side leaning parties, you know, sh just saying the most vitriolic things to create bigger divide. People are more lonely, isolated, and depressed than before, in my opinion. And that's causing, you know, this whole this generation of kids growing up without any, like, role models. No parenting. Because the parents themselves are probably too fucking busy to barely, you know, take care of their kids. Kids are growing up, you know, on fucking iPads. You got a bunch of, you know, dumb kids that are being grown up without any role models. Then you have, you know, con artists like fucking Andrew Tate. You have all these people that tells you this is what an alpha male is. An alpha male is a Bugatti. And they got a lot of bitches. And all these stupid kids think like, oh, that's what it means to be a strong man. And, and then they just go on to repeat, you know, the dumbest shit, the most hateful shit. And it's a cesspool. It's just a beautiful cocktail of a cesspool happening. I don't think I've quite lost as much faith in the internet as I have until now. But look, I'll be honest. This video is about one thing. It's about the weird blanket hatred towards VTubers. I've seen a massive, mm. massive hate train. Anytime people hear the word VTuber, they're like NPCs. And they immediately default to a couple of, you know, uh, reactions. Most of them are like, oh, must be a fat man. I can't believe you watched that. Not a real person. You can't even fuck them. All of these talking points are so grounded in misogyny and like objectifying women as object of desire. What the fuck do you think is going to happen by you watching a VTuber? Do you really think that you have a chance to have like a sexual relationship with them? That's insane. This is entertainment engagement. Why is that even being brought up? Because these kids, again, are stupid. They have no respect for other people. They grow up without any actual good role models, and this is how they behave online. Right, against Iron Mouse, which I don't understand. And I know that you guys aren't the ones doing this. Uh, you guys watching this video are very normal and well-adjusted people, and I appreciate that. But there are a lot of people online that seem to just have fun ruining other people's lives. I don't. Yeah, misery loves company. Hurt people hurt people. Happy people who are fulfilled and are working towards their dreams and building meaningful relationships doesn't go around saying this shit. It's only a bunch of chronically online, depressed, sad kids that says this shit because they can't feel anything. They need to have something to feel, right? They're numb, bitter, and negative engagement, even if it's not, you know, a good feeling. At least it's something, and it gets them going. Don't understand it. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I bringing all of this up? Well, well, don't worry, it'll all make sense. Just, just get along for the ride and listen to the weird British man rant at you. You see, in 2024, Iron Mouse broke the all-time sub record on Sheesh. Twitch. It was a massive achievement. It was, I'm sure, an amazing and an inspiring moment for all of us, as well as Mouse. Unfortunately, probably what you didn't see was the deluge of vile comments, disturbing threats, and just overall hatred towards mouse and i'd love yep. to tell you that this all started here and it's pretty much gone with now but sadly this is a thing that has been going on for a very very long time exactly this is not an annual like outlier like that happened this year it's an annual fucking event and it only seems like an annual event because big moments like this happens and people talk i bet even if no accolades or huge merit to recognition is going to or put a spotlight just day to day, I bet there's so many people who are so vitriol about this just because the nature of VTubing.
time. And, and this is not just for Mouse. VTubers in general have had to deal with a lot of shit yep. just for being an anime. Look at this. I know this is cliche, but as far as I can know, they could be a 300 pound man sitting in his bomb's basement. This is the common talking point that constantly beats brought up because people cannot fathom other people enjoying themselves. And they have, again, this deep rooted sense of misogyny where if you're watching a girl, then it must mean you want to fuck them. That's their entire line of thinking. And suddenly it's an own if they're like, haha, it's, I bet it's a 300 pound man living in his mom's basement. No, there has been cases where VTuber rigs, you know, I, there's some funny moments where there's some malfunctioning happenings with the rig and boom, it's actually a 40 year old uncle, right? That's happened. It's funny, but you're here there for the content. You're there for the entertainment. If a 300 pound man, if it truly was a 300 pound man sitting in his mom's basement, able to entertain and, you know, enrich the lives of this many people watching them, is there any harm being done? Why does that identity matter? Because they feel like there's something ingenuine. There's something wrong about interfacing as a VTuber model because that doesn't represent their flesh. And somehow it feels unfair to them that these pretty anime girls gets to pop off while these miserable, pathetic losers online are trying to find any reasons to drag them down. A girl or boy on the internet. So let's go back in time a little bit so that we can better understand the full scope of this mess. Yes, you got me. This is a video about me defending my friend. 100%. I I'm not even trying to hide that. But I also just want Nothing to bring wrong with a that. tiny bit of attention to the level of normalized hate that is just for some reason acceptable. And hopefully that, you know, maybe this video can make a tiny bit of a change. Because what some of these creators have to endure is on a level that I've never seen before on the internet. And I've been here for a very long time. Four years ago, VTubers had a massive explosion in popularity here mm -hmm. in the West. Now, obviously, they've been around in Japan for a while because this is very japanese coded uh, but you know four years ago they blew up and people started getting into them however there was a lot of pushback from people like me included who were kind of like what is this i don't know what this is me too when i first heard about vtubing i i think it was gura right i think a lot of people's first like um gateway portal into the land of vtubing is through hollow live right and i was like what the hell you guys watch a girl playing as an anime character streaming and playing video games what is this and uh, and back then i had no understanding of this industry i had no understanding of the type of people who even engage in vtubing and to me i thought it was huh well they're not real why are you watching them but here's the thing a lot of people seek out vtubing because of how women are objectified online you don't have to wear you know makeup and look make yourself presentable to a bunch of fucking simps and incels online you can just have a model and have the comfort of your own presence to just, you know, have fun with that model. And it also protects their privacy because there's a lot of crazy, creepy stalkers that exist mostly in, you know, girl streamers content. And not only that, there's also situations where people are really ill, right? They cannot literally get out of bed. That's the case with Iron Mouse, right? The whole plasma issue. And VTubing offers a different option for people who are, you know, not as fortunate to have their health or, you know, to maintain their privacy. There's so many different reasons that you seek out doing VTubing. And then on top of that, all that matters is that you have good content. If it truly was as easy to just have a big titty anime character profile, you know, model and just VTube and reach success, everyone would be doing it. But that's not the case. Like any industry or any, you know, um, successful endeavors, the top, like 1%, has it all and everyone else is trying because they're not genuinely funny so it's earned the model the avatar is simply an aesthetic aesthetic presence and then the personality and the content is what keeps people there but i like it but i don't know i don't know yeah i'm not gonna see and i'm sure any vtuber who was around in this era could tell you the amount of hatred that was given out towards vtubers like why are you using a voice changer are you a man are you an ai perhaps you know Pretty uninspired, insulting mm. comments. And during this boom is when a lot of people found Iron Mouse as well. Now, Iron Mouse had actually been streaming a long time before this as well, but it wasn't until this moment where a lot of VTubers were on Twitch and kind of getting great viewership. Fuck this game. Now, obviously, VTubers choose to be represented by an avatar for a multitude of reasons, but for Mouse, it was for anonymity, which is why most VTubers do it. And now, look, I, I cannot talk. Yeah, again, a lot of girls are VTubers, right? If you look at the VTuber base, a lot of them are women and do the amount of creepy motherfuckers that exist online. If you are like a flesh tuber, 
VTubers too, but a lot cheaper, bro. The amount of harassment, the amount of like constant remarks about their appearance and looks, it's disgusting. Having a VTuber, you know, avatar, it truly does abstract a portion of that away and really keeps you more private and protected. Talk for Mouse, you know, Mouse is, mouse is our own person, but you know, Mouse has been sick for a very, very long time with a multitude of illnesses, but the main one being primary immune deficiency. Primary immune deficiency is slightly different to autoimmune diseases that you might've heard about. Autoimmune diseases are where your uh, immune system kind of attacks itself. Whereas primary immune deficiency means that your immune system just doesn't work or doesn't work very well. And I'm sure a lot of my viewers are familiar with this because I'm always raising money for charities that want to find cures. Hey, yo. And support people with primary immune. Can never get it right. Primary immune deficiencies. <laughs> I mess it up all the time. When you have a really bad case of primary immune deficiency, it means that stuff like vaccines don't work on you. It means that you're worried about getting sick constantly from everything. Whereas maybe you and I could eat a bunch of dirt, maybe going even near dirt or someone who's slightly ill 20 feet away could easily get you sick or give you a bad case of pneumonia. This disease means that Mouse pretty much can't interact with anyone and can't leave her room. And even if she That's literally her situation. And a lot of people contest this. And... It's, I guess, um, not unreasonable to think that she's lying about it, right? If you've never known her and you just found this person and you see all the success and you're trying to figure out why people watch them and you, f and you do find out that there's this illness, which is a key point of her, you know, I don't want to say her brand, but that's a big part of her. And it's not as if it's like a very big secret, right? It's a part of her and her community supports her and a lot of people wishes that she could get better, right? But people, because of how many people lie online, right? All these different scams and shit, it isn't unreasonable to like have the average person think that this could be a lie. But then this then gets propagated onto a next level where everyone is just like questioning her entire existence. And imagine that, bro. Imagine being so fortunate in terms of her success, but also unfortunate due to her health where she can't leave her room. She literally like is bedridden and can't do anything. And finally, she found something that gives her hope and that she can work towards through content creation as a VTuber. And then other people then question that authority. Other people call her fake that she's, you know, lying and manipulative and that you're all idiots and you're all simps, you know, falling for this lie. You're supporting a, like a 300 pound man. Like what causes a person to do this shit? It's, it's just like the length that which people will go to drag people down to their own level is just disgusting online. If she wanted to, Mouse was disabled for a very long time and has slowly started to regain the ability to walk thanks to being able to finally support premium healthcare. Yay, love America. So this meant the only human content that Mouse got was pretty much talking to her parents or very close family who she was kind of already adjusted to and family who understood about the disease and took precautions. And look, I know this is a lot of information, but what I'm trying to get at is that you can only imagine how crushingly lonely this must be. Imagine not being able to leave your room. Yes, we were all there during COVID, but we at least knew that it was probably going to end at some point. And I'm sure that's her life though. I'm sure many of you knew, me included, that this was awful for our mental health. Not being able to see the people that you care about or interact with friends or just have a casual interaction with a cashier person is interactions that I'm sure all of us missed. And it was thanks to VTuber technology getting so much better and more accessible that Mouse was able to stream like me or like you or like any other big streamer. It was, it was, it was a level playing field. And on top of that, if you were a more artistically inclined person, you could show off your artistic skills by... My you know, I don't know, costume design or singing or lore or voice acting. There's so many more facets to it than me raging a jump king. <laughs> it's talent, okay? And one of okay. the best clips of Mouse's early career is that when she's trying to raise money to get a new medical bed. Uh, basically, normal beds, not good. They don't offer you support. They don't allow you to like, you know, go like lie upright. Basically. Yeah, it's got to do with like the lumbar support of your spine. If you're always like bedridden, the blood circulation, it became stagnant. So you need to have like a, a bed that inclines up kind of can move to get to make sure that even if you're in bed that at least there's some different movements a lot more support she asked her viewers if they'd be willing to donate towards that and within minutes minutes <laughs> they'd smash that goal i don't like to call my bed my works my bed my bed i don't like calling you my bed it makes me feel very embarrassed it makes me feel <sighs> not so good so I like to call uh, my bed my workspace because that's where I am all the time. Fox, thank you so much for the pedaling. <gasps> that's okay right there.
You see that 1k already? God damn it! <laughs> that was too Mal, thank you so much for the dodo. And I think a lot of people forget that Mouse didn't used to stream long. Mouse used to only stream for like an hour or two at a time and then would go offline to take medication. But now feels comfortable enough to take the medication and still keep streaming, which I think is an amazing thing and something that the outpouring support has allowed us to do. And obviously yeah. VTubers do more than just talk and play crappy games like me. Some of them have god tier singing skills. We all know that Mouse was training to be an opera singer and sounds incredible. If you could look at me once more. Combine that with aesthetically pleasing designs that are constantly changing, and it's no wonder that VTubers eventually had their boom. Now, obviously, Twitch and YouTube... VTubers, I think, there is, like, a higher standard to them to, like, have these different skills, right? Like, it, it does feel almost like K-pop idol, you know, shit, where you, you like, want to, uh... Let's say you want to try out for like a different agency. There's like obviously indie VTubers and corporate VTubers. But then if you're like a corporate VTuber, they ask you stuff like, what's your talent, right? What can you do other than just play variety games? Can you sing? Can you dance? Can you do, you know, all... I don't think dancing would really matter for the VTuber context, but there's so many different skills that need to be, you know, there to be competitive. It needs to pop up because how big this field is getting. So it's not like VTubing isn't just like this lazy way for me to just go on and just, you know, yap while watching Sea Dog's video, right? There, there's so much effort that goes on behind the scenes. YouTube have always been very gamer-centric and gamer-focused, and gamers aren't exactly known for being the most chill and reasonable people. Look, I was a Call of Duty kid. If I said the things that I said in those lobbies <laughs> and they were recorded, I would not be here today. I would not have a career. No one would be here if they had logs of our COD lobby talks that's right or like league of legends you know logs or any any career i was toxic okay now look i've been a content creator for 10 plus years online it's been my entire adult life i've been doing this for so long that i'm a fossil in internet years and even before that i would pretty much only spend my time on the internet and, and it was normal that as a creator that you would get some kind of hatred towards you mm -hmm. or some people who would just blindly write mean comments it was part of the job doesn't mean it's a good part or that we should accept it but it's just kind of how it works that's right right i can't do anything about it when you put yourself out there online and you share your opinions people are going to disagree and some people are more cordial than others some people just don't give a fuck and they just want your downfall because they are miserable and jealous of your success it's going to happen no matter what it is just the way it is right should it be different yeah but is it realistic to expect that this can happen no, that's why we just live with it. What? And because every creator would get a bunch of hate comments here and there, there was kind of a mutual respect amongst creators that you wouldn't mm. just blindly insult each other for no reason. You, you wouldn't insult someone you didn't know or you didn't have beef with. It was... That's right. I stay in my own lane. As many as drama videos there are in this channel, you'll notice that I don't star shit. I might be a little bit mean when I react to some videos, but I put my head down and try to be very objective with it, right? a thing that you could expect because that's how normal people behave. However, nowadays, it kind of feels like that's not the case anymore. It feels like it's kind of encouraged or okay to punch down and make fun of other creators. That you mm, yeah, I, I think, again, it's... I think a thing that is very important here is the amount of young kids that were not online before. Let's say when Connor was doing content creation a decade ago compared to now. A newer generation of kids are growing up with the axis of technology way earlier than, let's say, Connor could have had when he was a kid. Combine this with all the different things I talked to you about, how the world is becoming more angry due to the cost of living going up, more uncertainties about you know, systematic issues that we can't do anything about. Everything feels unfair and rigged against us. Lack of parenthood and your role model. Kids growing up on fucking TikTok, you know, short form content, brain rotted with shitty role models. And now that they are at a certain stage of their life where they can start just fucking shit posting online, I think that's kind of why there is so much, you know, uh, attention. Why it seems like suddenly out of nowhere this is happening. That's my opinion. You don't like or you think that something's weird about them. And this has happened a lot with VTubers. For example, in 2022, a massive TikTok creator, Noah Glenn Carter, made a video mocking the fact that people wanted to meet Mouse virtually. Here you go. This might be the saddest video on the internet. So I want you to take a look at all these people. They were all trying to get the attention of a monitor. Basically, that's a popular VTuber on the monitor that was virtually attending an anime convention. And this whole crowd of people were following the monitor in hopes that they could get a picture with it. Now, obviously, you... And to the average person who has no idea about anything about VTuber related, that probably seems dystopian. 
it, it sounds like these are crazy zombies that are so obsessed with anime and shit that are just losers and outcasts of society desperate for a fucking picture with a non-existent, you know, person. That's what the average person may think. But it's way more than that. You and I know that Mouse can't leave her room, and this is the only way that Mouse can walk around a convention. Exactly. Or see any of her viewers, or any of those viewers can talk to Mouse. Because that TikTok guy, right? He, he isn't really explaining the whole context of why this is even happening. If you reduce, you know, if you reduce her down to just a monitor, it's like saying, oh, all the people just want to have pictures with Hatsune Miku on fucking display. It's not even a real person. Yeah, you can definitely make the average person think that this seems weird, but it, this is a very disingenuous representation of what happened. It's a rare experience for everyone involved and an amazing feat of technology that we can even do anything like this. And to his credit, he did apologize. This is an apology to a creator called Iron Mouse because of this video. <laughs> what happened? Did a bunch of, you know, <laughs> did a bunch of, uh, did he get a bunch of hate? <laughs> a shitload of, you know, people that may agree with them about, you know, VTubing being cringe, but there's also a huge amount of people that, you know, support VTubing, and I wonder, you know, if you got a huge backlash. Now, in my video on this, I called the video one of the saddest videos on the internet, which is completely unnecessary on my part. And Iron Mouse actually responded, clarifying that the Ooh. people weren't even crowding her, but instead they were crowding somebody named Connor that was there. <laughs> I'm really sorry. It's it's all Sea Dog's fault. To you, Iron Mouse, if you're watching, my video was completely unnecessary. I really hope that my video didn't cause you any kind of negativity or anything. Did you see how viral your video went? Didn't cause any kind of negativity? You know what happened, but he's at least apologizing. And again, I am so sorry if it did. I will be deleting that video as soon as I post this one. First of all, ouch. Second of all, you didn't think there was going to be any negativity? Yeah, come on, bro. What the fuck? Come, come on, bro. That's insane. You call it like the most pathetic thing ever. Like, come on. Ugh. I mean, it's still an apology. At least he did it and deleted the video. But brother, Christ. What do you mean by that? And now look, to, to Noah's credit, he did apologize and take yeah, down the video. And, I, and again, I think that that needs to be commended as a lot of people don't have the common decency to do that anymore. But, but. Yeah. Would you, would you not have taken it down if you? If there wasn't backlash, of course it would have stayed up. If, if nobody complained, if everyone joined in, haha, let's make fun of it. Would you? The apologies are not a sorry for doing it. It's sorry that I got, I got caught doing it, right? If he truly was apolog, like if if he was the type of person he's saying that I'm not that kind of person or whatever, and you know my intention wasn't any negative, you know, uh, harassment, you would never have made that video from the first place. You're sorry you got caught, you got backlash, this is a PR fucking apology, and sure, you apologize and you deleted the video, but come on now. Would you not have taken it down? Or, or did you take it down just because people were like, hey man, you're kind of a dick. The reason why I show you this is not because I want to send any hatred. This is two years ago, it does not matter, it, it's over. Do not send hatred towards another creator. And if <laughs> you do, you are a piece of shit and okay. you should not be here. But why is it now that you can just dunk on something that you don't know anything about, you don't understand, and you didn't bother to research into, why is that the norm now? Why because there's too many fucking kids online. We should ban social media for kids under the age of 18. I genuinely feel this. And if you're gonna kind of call me a fascist, if you're gonna call me like crazy radical, go ahead. I think there's nothing that could be good from kids being online. It can only harbor the most negative type of engagement. You know how many girls that exist looking at Instagram pictures of heavily filtered and photoshopped, you know, ridiculous standards of beauty and how many girls become suicidal because they can't look like them? Or how many dude, young men sees like, oh, if you're at this age, you should be a millionaire with this kind of cars and it causes so much fucking damage psychologically, mentally that isolates more people. There can be definitely good that can come from, you know, social media. There's a lot of educational content, there's a lot of fun content, but kids who are just barely developing, that haven't even have the full realization of what empathy or emotional awareness is, that have their prefrontal cortex still developing, they should not be fucking online. And if they are, they should have a separate category like fucking YouTube for kids, bro. Donald Trump, please ban social media from kids. I swear, the influx of just kids that grew up without any role models, a bunch of pathetic losers that are just jealous and only says hateful shit because they're numb and they need to reach out for some sort of dopamine rush. That can only happen if they say something hateful. This is why things just seem crazy online, bro.
Why, why is it that you just post first and research second? Oh, oh, I got some hate about this. I'll take it down. Don't worry about the other 500 videos where I blindly made fun of people I don't understand. The sad truth now is that it seems like it's okay if you're a large creator to be a dick to anybody you want or don't like or don't agree with. You know, <laughs> having a large audience is a huge, huge responsibility. Whether we like it or not, we are influencers. We inf What's the term? Uh, with great power comes great responsibilities, right? Influence people with our opinions and what we say. I'm sure some people watching this video right now will be influenced by my opinion on all of this stuff. That, that's that's how it goes. But yeah, for sure. I, I think one part of this is that um, I, I, I don't think that you should be looking at content creators for any type of role models or lessons. Like... I'm just a dude that watches anime online. If you think that I'm the pinnacle of morality and ethics and how to be a good person, what the fuck are you doing? You shouldn't look at any form of entertainment content, you know, as this compass, like a moral compass to follow. Fuck no. You are your own person. You can come up with your own conclusions. You can separate the content from the creator and you can decide that what this person is saying is fucking stupid or what this person's saying aligns with me. And at the end of the day, I'm here for entertainment and move on from there. But for some reason. But of course, even if that's the way it should be, there's a lot of people due to the level of parasocial connections that content creators have with their audience that they can definitely be more influenced according to their ideology. For sure, you guys too, even watching my content have to a degree been impacted through the way that I view the world, right? And Hopefully that's more positive than negative. It's okay now to blindly hate others and send rabid fans to go and attack people and stuff they don't understand. Why? It's hard enough just existing right now. It yep. is horrible living in this year. It is a miserable time to be alive. What? Yes, again, right? So many people are bitter and mad at the world because everything just seems fucking impossible, right? <clears throat> like, ignore the political climate. Just think about the average person and their worries about their future. Rent going up so high, people can't even think about becoming homeowners, let alone like rent a fucking one bedroom apartment without having fucking, <clears throat> sorry, uh, roommates, right? Things are getting way more expensive. Everything looks impossible. Doom and gloom everywhere. That can only cause people to really look for negative engagements. Why are we making it harder for everyone? And if you're a VTuber, why are you making it harder for everyone? Because the average person is a shitty monkey that wants to drag others down. Crab bucket mentality. Meaning, in a bucket, if a crab tries to escape, do you know what the other crabs do at the bottom of the barrel? They drag them down. You don't want to see other people succeed. Because it's not you. You want to drag other people down so that you can wallow in the misery with everyone. And it's just this graveyard of comfort where the most ignorant, the most jealous and hateful people, they can only feel like satisfied if other people are suffering with them rather than trying to uplift each other. It is kind of just accepted now that you just get this level of blind hatred all the time. It's insane. Yes. Why is this okay? Anyway, moving on with the timeline. Since then, Mouse, and I assume most VTubers have had to deal with insult after insult that is normalized. For Mouse personally, this level of hatred and vitriol escalated another level when Mouse was nominated for the Game Award. Here it is. Uh, no, that was Queso Pecora stuff, but this is kind of relevant to 2023. Uh, now, the Game Awards have this category this is, yeah. uh, for Content Creator of the Year. Obviously, this year had a massive amount of very, very big creators that I'm sure we're all familiar with. But... To the surprise of Mouse, and to most of us, Mouse got nominated. And, and this isn't saying that Mouse didn't deserve it. Mouse had an amazing year. Mouse had raised a ton of money for charity, uh, had broken the all-time sub record for a woman on Twitch, and had done just some of the most amazing shit when you consider that Mouse is bedridden and has to have medication every single day that completely changes how any of this would be done, and providing such an insane energy to every stream whilst battling a ton of medical issues that are permanent throughout Mouse's life. I think the nomination is deserved, and by some sheer miracle, Mouse had won the award. It was Great. a crazy achievement. And Uh-oh, but anytime this happens, the floodgates lift, you get a bunch of tourists that doesn't even know what VTubing is, comes in and says, what the fuck is this? This is an anime character. This ain't real. Y'all are losers. A bunch of cringe, degenerate weebs supporting a 300-pound man 
acting as a girl online. This is the mindset of the average person that hates VTubers, bro. They're programmed to be like this. Nobody expected Mouse to win, to be honest, because Mouse was by far the smallest creator out of the ones that were nominated. And the game award goes to... Iron Mouse. Woo! So, Iron Mouse couldn't be here tonight because Iron Mouse is animated, and sadly, we're not in the Matrix yet. Obviously, these creators were massive, and a lot of their fans that are watching the Game Awards were a, a bit upset about Mouse winning. Yep. Bro, just... <laughs> I hope you guys will never do this for me. I can fight my own battles, but, like, bro, just meat writing just getting angry because your favorite content creator didn't win and you spewing hate onto others i bet those creators themselves would never want you to behave like that but it's these most radical most lonely most just depressed kids that has nothing better to do that can only you know farm negative engagements by shitting on other fandoms and communities bandwagoning off of an established platform trying to cause chaos Right, farming negative engagement. It's just so fucking cringe. No one asks you to do this. I bet the creators themselves are fucking chill with each other. Why are you monkeys fighting in the trenches when nobody asked you to? Because people are terminally online. They're depressed. They have nothing better to do. And it's a feeling of negative engagement that gives them a sense of feeling. They're no longer numb or bitter. They can at least feel something. That's the saddest part. The award. This has led to a constant constant and i cannot preface this enough a constant stream of hatred now that mouse has had to deal with openly on all of her socials for years now this is the level of hatred that is normally like I, I, I... exactly mushoku tensei versus re-zero same thing the creators of both shows are friends yet their fandoms the most crazy people in both communities wages war on each other every fucking day and if you realize what kind of people who does this you'll realize that they're children they're stupid kids their entire identity and personality is that fandom that community because they have nothing else in their lives and once you have a person who identify whose personality is that fandom suddenly some other people are glazing and hyping up something else they feel like their worldview is shattered. They feel like what they've done and invested suddenly doesn't matter because they're fucking losers. They have no convictions. They have no principles. They simply bandwagon off of what's popular and suddenly it feels like they just made the wrong bet. And now they need to somehow justify their position by putting other people down. It's so fucking cringe, but it makes sense because these are stupid children and why children should be banned off of social media. Like, Fully functioning people. And it's not just children, right? Grown ass men do this shit too. It's all about the mental maturity, the emotional IQ. Being able to empathize and look from an other person's perspective, I think is one of the most significant factors in whether or not you're an intellectual person or you're a fucking monkey, right? Being able to critically think and understand from different people's perspectives, even though you've never been in that position, being able to contextualize that, I think is so important. And if you can do that, you would realize the type of harm and negativity you're sending their way. But kids don't think about that, right? People who are mentally stunted don't think like this. They view the world as this unfair, cruel place. And all they can do is hate, hate, hate because they are hated themselves. I just gotta show you. I gotta show you. It's like ridiculous. This is 2022. Back when Mouse's comments were pretty normal, I'd say. As you can see here, this is beating Kai. Okay, a little negative and unnecessary, but not that bad. And this is not Kai Sinat's problem. Kai didn't send his boys to do that, I don't think. This is a numbers problem. This happens everywhere. Think about the percentage, 1%, right? 100 people, 1%. What does that mean? 1% of people are crazy. Think about scale 1,000, 10 people are crazy. 10,000, 100 people are crazy. And you see how something insignificant as 1% can suddenly have a huge reason as you scale up and up. And the bigger you are, the more crazy people there will exist. It's impossible to have everyone behave in an ideal way. You can't do that. You can try your best. So again, I, I don't think this is like a Kai Snap problem. It just happens when you get big. Toxic people will exist no matter what if you get big due to law of large numbers. This over Kai? 
bro who are you you know it's and, and luckily at this point not all the comments are like this but they're the, by far the most liked ones and it only gets worse the closer we and here's another thing right what i've also noticed is that on tiktok these kind of hate comments they get a lot of likes it's it's the funniest shit i noticed for one content creator where there was this one comment over and over where they would glaze the co uh, the content creator about his you know work but it wouldn't get much likes and then they start to spam bro fell off and it started to get a lot of likes these kids don't care they just are npcs they say the same shit because they see how much engagement it got and they think oh i want some online recognition i'm gonna comment something these are not normal reasonable people they're fucking sickos that are programmed to chase internet clout to fill some sort of void in their hearts because they do nothing fulfilling with their lives. But they're by far the most liked ones, and it only gets worse the closer we get to today. You all came from that Kai video, right? This is number one streamer. No way blood, this is number one streamer. This is who gets number one on Twitch. It's an evil world. We Here's the thing, bro. Luffy is your profile picture, and you say this is who gets number one subs on Twitch. Do you think that the character Monkey D. Luffy would be, you know, would be proud of Ahmed Farah here saying this shit, saying this hateful shit. It's so funny when their profile pictures are also anime characters and they act in ways that their favorite character would probably find fucking disgusting. We live in. And you think, okay, maybe something happened at the time. This has been pretty much constant until now. Speed and Kai on top. How is the streamer of the year? How is the streamer of the year? This won the award, by the way. Oh, hell nah. This is who won. No cap, who's Iron Man? And these are pretty vanilla comments, by the way. These are, like, pretty tame comments compared to some things I've seen. Brain rot. This beat Cypher PK. Game awards are wild. Why did you win? No way this one created the year. I'm crying. This literally goes on and on. And you think, okay, look. It's because Mouse won the streamer of the year. It probably stops after that. Oh, no. So many people are like, post this on Instagram Reels. Post this on Reels. Oh, yeah, great. Because uh, love that. Love being toxic on Instagram. Bro, who are you? I'm begging you. Please post this on Instagram. Why do people just want to be so cruel? What the f***? Just they got nothing better to do. These are NPC replies. They have a hotkey, bro. They all say the same shit. Because they're stupid kids that sees that negative engagement got likes in a different fucking video. They're actually NPCs behave. In, in the same fucking way. I wear it and it's fucking fire, okay? Jeez. On my life, I've never in my entire <clears throat> life seen a single stream. Why do Who you care? Who gives a fuck? And they, they're they so cringe because they cannot fathom other people existing out of their bubble. They are all frogs in a well. They exist in a fucking bubble and they think that everything that they know is the extent of reality. Turns out, the world is a lot bigger, and there's a lot of other people doing their things, thriving with their own communities. And then once you find out that other bubbles exist, why do you go in and suddenly start being hostile? It's because the unknown is scary to fucking monkeys. The average person is so stupid, hateful, insecure, that rather than trying to be accepting of new things and understanding different things that they never knew about, they would rather just engage in hateful shit immediately. This is probably why aliens never want to visit us. And if they did, I bet we would fuck up so hard. I bet if aliens visit us and they wanted peace, there would be so many fucking retards that would just start being hateful and wage war and we would get wiped out. And you know what? So be it. Humanity is disgusting. This is why I'm so blackpilled and why I choose to see the worst in people because... I know that not everyone is like this. This is a magnifying glass put on to the vocal minority of the most pathetic losers online. But there's a lot of them. And in order to protect my mental health and my sense of well-being, I reduce you down to a monkey. Because if I had no expectations from the beginning, how could I ever get mad? When I see hate comments like this on my content, I laugh rather than crying. Because this is the only behavior a monkey would do. And once that is done, suddenly I feel more liberated and I can just focus on making entertaining content rather than crying about hateful comments from 14-year-old kids online. Why do you care? Why? Like if I just haven't seen something, I just don't interact. I don't understand. What exactly. All you have to do is be like, huh, cool. They're huge. They do these things. All right.
I'm going to watch the person I usually watch by. Nah, they need to go in and ask, who are you? Who is this? What the fuck? Y'all watch this shit? It's just like, who does this behavior again? Their entire identity, their entire personality is glazing someone else. And the moment that something else challenges their worldview and it exposes them to a greater perspective in life, they cannot comprehend it. They have a narrow, limited worldview of what is you know, content to them. And if you're not watching my people, then you're against us. Tribal mindset exists everywhere. Sports teams, movies, TV shows, different fandoms exists everywhere. What has happened where we all feel the need to, to say our opinion and, and be like, yeah, guys, we hate this, right? Who cares? And another thing, most people don't even care about that. I don't think most kids typing this shit actually cares about the who cares part. Like, who are you? No. They notice that if they type this, other retards will like their comment and dogpile. It's all just number driven. You know how Connor said in the beginning, the worst thing that happened to Twitter is monetizing Twitter so that everyone is just, you know, engaging with rage baits and negative engagements. It's the same thing. Most people don't fucking actually care enough about Iron Mouse, you know, if they're a complete tourist. But they realize that if I say this hateful shit, then I'm going to get a bunch of internet clicks, which translates to nothing except a little bit of clout that I feel. And because now I, as a random lonely kid, got a bunch of likes, I, I feel important. I feel self-important. It's so, so cringe. You're a loser! This has gone on for months has pretty much just led to Mouse just not posting on TikTok, which I feel is really f***ed up. Sad. You can just successfully bully a massive creator off a platform. The, the, the reason why this all happened, by the way, is just because Mouse won an award. What? And this is just the stuff that Mouse gets on her own socials. This doesn't include the hatred that she receives from just existing in those posts from those low tier bait Twitter accounts that post, can you believe this cartoon is beating mm -hmm. our stream? Here it is. And it only escalated once more when Iron Mouse got the all time sub record on Twitch, uh, which led to a bunch of news articles tweeting about it and, and people talking about it. And unfortunately, a lot of people were just being blindly hateful. And of course, this level of hatred doesn't just stay on the platforms you'd expect it to. It's also in Mouse's chat. Uh, here is a 85 page document uh, of just some recent bands of people saying the most heinous shit Towards Mouse. Now nah, you're telling me this bitch ass VTuber surpassed Kai Sinek. God, you know these people are so ugly. Just said how Sims donate to this. You know these people are so ugly. It's just so sad that they really always fixate on that. It's the identity. It's the fact that it's a beautiful anime profile like Avatar. And suddenly, if you don't look just like that, you're lying to the audience and you're bad. You're a bad person. You must be fat ugly. That's why you use this VTuber model. That, it, it, it's always so grounded in misogyny, man. Objectifying women based on their looks, and suddenly if they have an avatar that abstracts that personal level away, beyond just, you know, looking good, it's all about the privacy, the anonymous part, right? Not having to deal with these fucking sickos. That's the whole point. Like, they always fixate on the looks, the appearance of what they actually look like, and it, it, it's probably because, again, they feel like VTubing is like a way of cheating, cheating the system. Because a lot of people, let's, let's, let's get serious, right? Appearances matter a lot. Appearances matter so much in life. We are human beings. We are irrational social creatures. The first thing you see a person, you look at their height, their hair, their face, you know, their skin complexion, their looks, what they wear. Before you even look at the content inside, that's just animal behavior. And us as monkeys primates, we grew up like that, right? We evolved like that. But you as a human being can then realize that Human beings are more than just the outward looks. It's about what's within. But because of nature of, you know, beauty and pretty privilege and how some creators, if you're better looking, you can probably, you know, grow faster because people give you a bigger chance. They feel as if VTubers somehow cheating the system and that the, this is a 40 year old ugly fat man, you know, tricking all the audiences and you're all fucking lame for that, which is so, so beyond cringe. And look at these bunch of anonymous, you know, commenters typing about their looks when they will never even show their face online because they're too much of a fucking coward to. I bet they themselves are the exact representation of what they comment. Fat, ugly, hatred, that's all of them. And yes, I do know, I've already said that like Iron Mouse and Kaisen and I'm sure they get along. Creators get along. Kai didn't do this shit. 
it's a law of law of law of large numbers. The one percent factor as a scale to such a big audience. Like he's streaming with like 140k fucking people. Of course, there's gonna be unhinged people that you can never do anything about, right? You can moderate and make your chat behave, but after that, the most radical, you know, zealots are gonna do whatever the fuck they want to do. It's it's just so sad. This crap. This is the bitch that broke Kai's record. I refuse to believe any of you are real human beings unless you have less than 60 IQ. No one in this chat is real. I've been if you had an IQ above 60, you would have never even commented this shit. Because a person with an IQ that high, I think, would actually have emotional awareness and intelligence, empathy. They would never type shit like this. You're self-reporting your retardation. Less than 60 IQ. No one in this chat is real. I've been watching this shit for 10 minutes and I want to myself. How do people watch this shit, you weirdos? You'll never get on Kai's level. You guys know this is- Look at that. You'll never get on Kai's level. Again, it's not Kai's fault, but imagine being such a loser that, like, you identify as Kai. Why does it matter if she's doing better or worse than Kai? Why does that matter to you? Who types that? You'll never get on Kai's level? Will you as an individual type in that get on Kai's level? No. Because you're a fucking loser. You've never tried to do anything. You've never built anything. You've never accomplished anything. You ride on the coattails of established people, identify themselves, you know, identify themselves as that platform, that community. Then you go on, like as if you've borrowed, you know, Kai's power and you put other people down. You think you're on Kai's level. That's the most cringe shit. Exactly. What about your level? How the fuck are you talking from a perspective of someone that's doing better than Iron You are an absolute loser. What are you talking about? He's a fat guy, right? I mean, obviously, all those insults. Uh, Kai will never let you smash. Well, here's the thing. No one would actually comment that because they're also homophobic. Most of that community, most of these stupid kids, right? Like, a lot of them are very homophobic. It's just the way it is. So they never even thought about, like, comments like that. Like, Kai will never let you smash. It's such a funny example because a lot of people are saying, like, if you watch these VTubers, you must watch them just to fuck, right? You can say the same shit about your fucking boy that you're glazing right now. You're doing tricks off of his meat. He won't let you smash, but they would never understand that because their brains don't work like that. They're homophobic. They cannot think beyond three logical decision trees ahead. It's just whatever they find funny in the beginning that gets clicks and they just... They just go with that. A lot of people uh, saying that Mouse is lying about her illness, which, I mean, I don't, I don't have to tell you why that's wrong. Like, look at this. This is... <laughs> this shit's just blurred. We can't even show it. Psychotic. This is <clears throat> up. How is this okay? And by the way, this is the list, obviously, that doesn't include the N-word bans, or that would be another 20 pages. Because of course it would be. Like, if, like if this was my chat, I just would not stream. I would just not show up. This is... This is... Uh, this is f***ed. 100%. I want to make this clear. I'm not blaming any crazy obviously we saw a lot of people name dropping kai saying how, how could yeah it's not kai's fault they say a chat is a reflection of the creator the, the content creator the streamer while that may be true even if you try your best to moderate as hard as you can again law of large numbers one percent when it gets bigger and bigger and bigger it's it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy you, you can't do anything about that these are the vocal minority who are the most hateful the most stupid the most active it's a magnifying glass being put on here. Vast majority of people who watch Kai wouldn't in engage in this behavior simply due to fucking math. If you just look at the amount of people probably commenting this shit compared to how many people actually watch him, it's not even a fucking fair comparison. This loose to Kai and all that stuff. This is not me blaming Kai in any capacity. I think his audience is at the size that is absolutely absurd. And, and you, at that level, you, you can try and tell your viewers, hey man, look, be respectful, which, which Kai has on numerous times. He, he's openly praised Iron Mouse and been very supportive towards small creators. Iron Mouse has always been top five all time. See, somebody I had to pass during my first summathon. Now I know people- Like, look, there's some motherfuckers saying who, who, but a lot of people also say, love dub Iron Mouse, literally, yeah. Some people again are gonna say who, 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 but her hate is so forced, right? L haters, like, Shout out for Iron Man. I was like, there's a lot of people that aren't this crazy. I've all time. See, somebody I had to pass during my first summathon. Now, I know people are defensive. I know a lot of people defend me and shit like that. But, chat, if you actually looked at her stream and actually kept up with what she's doing, you feel what I'm saying? Not only was it for a good cause, but it was pretty well put together. But obviously, you know, as a creator, you do still have some influence over your viewers. And I think it's important to make sure that when you see this behavior in the community that you call it out. And I'm not entirely sure when this happened online but it feels like it's okay to just blindly make fun or hate something you don't understand uh, i think the de facto thing that everyone points out 
regarding like this uh, paradigm shift that we feel on social media with people going crazy and being hateful has to do with 2020 with the pandemic, right? Ever since that, a lot of people, you know, brains really have been scrambled. A lot of kids, a lot of people, a lot of grown-ups, you know, stuck inside. They're just becoming more mentally, mentally ill. And ever since then, it just feels like uh, people are very emboldened to say the most hateful shit possible to negatively engage because people are more isolated, depressed, and lonely than ever before. Or have not learned anything about. But I guess that is more of a reflection of the current times we live in. Yep. Because everyone... It's just a polarizing time, man. Very polarizing time of, you know, many different things going wrong in the world. It's not a certain individual's fault. It's not a certain creator's fault. This exists on a greater scale across the world. Seems to do that all the time. As a creator, I would be embarrassed if I saw my viewers blindly hating on someone else using my name. I would be mortified if I saw that. And, and the one good thing about- Listen, if you guys are going out to bat for me because there's some stupid drama and people are rage baiting and calling my name out, I do appreciate you, but- Never ever go out and diminish other people's contents just because, I don't know, whatever fucking rivalry you might have. No. But we do know that there are some motherfuckers, right? That's on site. That's fair game. About all you guys is that I know that you don't do that. And I appreciate that because you're all cool and you're all normally well adjusted people, I hope. And look, I'll admit, I, I don't have the point of this video, I, I don't have a plan. I was just going crazy looking at all of this open hatred and losing my mind wondering why this is normal. Th that was literally it. And that's the reason why I'm making this video. And I, and I kind of wanted to ask if anyone else or any other VTubers or any other even YouTubers, uh, if you've experienced this same kind of level of blind hatred yourself. Yeah. Uh, I would love to hear about it. Just so uh, that I know that I'm not going crazy. I hope we can have a civilized and good discussion in the comments. And so with that, I wish you all the best of luck. Don't let these urinal cake eating children distract you from what you urinal want. Urinal cake? Now I'm going to go drink a beer. All right. All right. And that's pretty much the video. And I don't think things are really going to change. I think that because of the way that the society functions and people being more isolated, depressed, and lonely, all these different systemic issues making it seem like the world isn't possible and things are rigged against you. With the new generation of kids growing up without any actual role models, being glued to technology and having fucking stupid influencers like myself, you know, be the person to teach these kids or being role models, only terrible things can happen, right? There is no good role models for kids to grow up by. They don't learn how to be respectful or how to act appropriate. The interfacing of an anonymous you know, online interaction obviously emboldens people to say even more shit because if you did this shit in public, you would never, you would never say that, right? That's that Mike Tyson quote, right? Like, people don't say all this hateful shit in, you know, person because real consequences can happen. It's just a bunch of keyboard warriors who say this shit behind the screen because they themselves are so depressed. They themselves hate their lives. And remember, hurt people hurt people. Very depressed, chronically online people who are depressed, they need to do something to make them feel themselves feel something other than numbness or being bitter by being incentivized through negative engagements by, you know, even the whole Twitter thing, the advertising monetization, or even just cloud chasing, random people just fucking doing this as a full-time job. They realize that negative interactions cause more engagements than anything else. Just a bunch of stupid kids, NPCs, saying the same fucking five lines. Put the fries in the bag, bro. Bro fell off. Bro, who is this? Blah, 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 right? And then it feeds into this whole cycle of toxic negativity. It's so fucking sad. But here's the thing. This is not the majority. I choose to believe that this is not the majority. Most people are reasonable. It's just that online, negativity gets a magnifying glass put on it because of the whole nature of negative engagements. And it may seem like everyone is crazy, but I don't think so. I think there is hope. There is still many people that are reasonable, but obviously with this huge influx of mentally ill children, I just wish that there was some fucking policy to ban these fucking kids off online. So I don't have to fucking, you know, I don't have to operate this shit as daycare, nor should anyone else, but please go give Connor a like on the video. This is a great rant. Shit went fucking crazy. Here's a link. And I'll see you next time.